Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about matrix equation given by a times x equals to b. And we will discuss how to write the systems of linear equation by using the matrix equations. So suppose that you have a matrix A, M by N matrix. So here, M means the number of rows. And this N is the number of columns. And suppose also that you have a vector in Rn. Then A times X is defined in this way. And this is the linear combination of columns of A with x sub something, the entries of x as weights. So in this, this is the uh, multiplying a matrix by a vector. So basically, um, this matrix vector product um, has the same property as what you multiply numbers. So suppose that you have a matrix A with vectors uv in Rn, and c is a number, then A times u plus v, is the same as, well, we can distribute the matrix. So it's the same as AU plus AV. And A times CV is the same as C times AV. And this means we can just factor out the scalars. Okay, so let's practice to calculate the matrix product. So here we have A equals to this matrix. And this is the column matrix, which, which is just the vector X. So we can calculate this matrix vector product by taking the linear combination of the column vectors of A with weights of the components of X, which means this is the same as 1 times 2, 1, and negative 3 minus 6 times 5, or 4. And this gives you, well, 2 minus negative 30 and 1 minus 0 and negative 3 minus 24, which will give you negative 28, 1, and negative 27. But there is another way to think about this matrix product. So if you look at the first row, well, the first row is simply 1 times 2 plus negative 6 times 5. So we can think of this matrix product as... So we can separate the calculation for each row. So what I mean is... This is the same as 2, 5 times 1, negative 6, 1, 0, 1, negative 6, negative 3, 4, and 1, negative 6. Then the first row becomes 2 times 1 plus 5 times negative 6. And the second row becomes 1 times 1 plus 0 times negative 6. And the last row becomes negative 3 times 1 plus 4 times negative 6 which will give you the same answer. Okay, so we can write the system of the equation in different ways. In previous section, we can write the system equation in a vector equation. So for example, we can list the equation on each row. So 3x1 plus x2 minus 5x3 equals to 9. And x2 plus 4x3 is 0. And if you separate this vector equation for its variables, then this gives you x1 times 3, 0, plus x2 times 1, 1, and x3 times negative 5, 4, 9, 0. So this was the vector equation for the given system of equation. However, in the matrix equation, um, the equation becomes a much more simpler. So we can regard this vector equation as the linear combination of these three vectors with weight x1 and x2 and x3. So the equation is equivalent to this matrix vector product where the matrix A is 3, 0, 1, 1, negative 5, and 4. And the vector x consists of x1, x2, and x3. And this equals to 9, 0. Does it make sense? So, so far, we learned three different ways of writing the system of equation. So the solution set of the matrix equation, AX equals to B, is equivalent to the solution set to vector equation, which is given by X1, A1, plus X2, A2, 
dot 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 x n a n equals to b and this is also equivalent to the solution set of the system of linear equations where the augmented matrix is given by a1 a2 and so on until a n and the vector b so here large a is m by n matrix x and b's are vectors in rn and these a sub i's are column vectors of a so this augmented matrix forms a m times n plus one matrix okay so this exercise asks you to um, find out three different ways to solve the linear system of equation so basically well the first thing that comes to my mind is to take RREF of the augmented matrix. So if you take the augmented matrix of this system of linear equations, we get 1, 2, negative 1, and 1, 2, 3, 1, and 3, and 0, 4, negative 2, and 0. So if you RREF this matrix, you will get a solution. On the other hand, we can solve the system of equation using vector equations. So we can associate each columns of A to each variables, like x1, x2, and x3. So the solution set of the system of linear equation is the same as the solution set of the vector equation given by x1 times 1, 2, 0, plus x2 times 2, 3, and 4, and x3 times negative 1, 1 and negative 2 equals to 1, 3 and 0. And once you write the vector B as a linear combination of the column vectors of A, we can rewrite this as the matrix equation. So the large A corresponds to the coefficient matrix of the given system, which is 1, 2, 0, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, 1 and 2, negative 2, and x is just x1, x2, and x3. And b, the vector b, corresponds to 1, 3, and 0. So this theorem summarizes what we have learned so far. So suppose that you have the matrix A, like m by n matrix. So these statements about the solution sets are logically equivalent. So specifically, um, having a solution set for the matrix equation is equivalent to have solutions in terms of the vector equations or this means that you can write b as a linear combination of the column vectors of large a this means that if you can write b as a linear combination of a sub i's then our b sits inside the span of the column vectors of the given matrix and if you can find the solution set of the given system of equations, then that is equivalent to say that your matrix A has a pivot position for each rows, or you can solve for each variables. So here, one thing that I want to note is that this matrix A is the coefficient matrix and is not the augmented matrix. Okay, so this exercise ask you whether the column vectors of B spans R3, which is like the part C of the um, previous theorem above. And if you apply the theorem above, so if you apply part A, the question is equivalent to ask whether the equation, the matrix equation, have a solution. And if you apply part B, then the question becomes whether the arbitrary vector B on R3 is a linear combination of the column vector, like v1 equals to 1, negative 3, 0, and v2 equals to 2, negative 1, and 5, and v3, which is 1, 2, and 3. And if you apply the part D, then the question is equivalent to ask whether um, the matrix B has a pivot position in each row. So which one is the easiest? Well, I believe the part D is the easiest one to answer because we have a right mechanism to find out the people position, which is RREF. So let's pause the video and try to find 
the row epsilon form of the given matrix B. So the first step could be, well, we can add 3 times R1 into R2 to replace R2. And this can eliminate the first entry of the second row. And you get 1, 2, 1, 0, 5, 5, and 0, 5, and 3. And you divide by 5 for the second row. Then this gives you 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 5, 3. And now you subtract 5 times R2 from R3. Then this gives you... I guess 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 0, and 0, 0, negative 2, which is an REF of the given matrix B. And we have pivot position in each row, which means the matrix equation have a solution, or in other words, the column vectors of the given matrix B span R3.